It's been an interesting day. I got within five minutes, well maybe five and a half minutes, of setting a new eBay record for myself. Uh, tell you about that in a minute, but first of all, my name's Ian and I sell books on eBay. So, like I said, last 24 hours, I nearly set a new record and not one that I want to get or I'm proud of or anything in any way whatsoever. But I went 23 hours, 54 and about a half minutes without a single sale. Now, I said, I think in yesterday's video that, you know, it's been quite consistent for the first few days of this month, first couple of days of this month and towards the end of last month. And uh, if that persisted, things are okay business-wise. Um, I also said, but having said that, I'll probably have a £40 day now. Yeah, that that's what happened. Um, no sales since yesterday morning, Sunday morning, all the way through to today, this morning, Monday morning, and you know, literally five minutes away from it being that full 24 hour period, and somebody came in and bought a couple of Martina Cole paperbacks. Unfortunately, the same person's bought two, but they didn't bundle them together. They've bought them as two separate transactions. So I'm gonna to have to go in and you know refund the extra postage, make sure they understand what the deal is, etc. So the time taken to do all of that is probably what I've made profit wise on those two books, you know, for the, the time cost. So a really frustrating twenty four hours. Really, really, really frustrating. Um I've got a cat trying to climb into a bag down here. Hugo man. Just not now you've got your head stuck in the handle. Oh dear. Wait a minute. Come on. Let me take that out of there. And you go that way. And he's escaped. Animals are strange. <clears throat> right, so yeah, a really, really, really slow Sunday. Sundays always used to be good. You know, for a long time, Sundays were probably the best days of sales, and then Mondays weren't too far behind, and then it slowed down through the week, and then picked up again Friday, Saturday, onto a great Sunday. The last few weeks, Sundays have been atrocious. I mean, just, they're the worst day of the week. I don't expect to do much on a Sunday. <clears throat> which is quite good because it means I've not got too much to pack on a Monday morning but that's just ridiculous two two paperbacks oh, I don't know I don't I don't know anyway that is by um, I did continue with my other target bits and pieces yesterday so managed to list £369 worth of books uh, went out and picked up about 45 quid's worth of stock. So uh, pickups haven't been great this last week either, but they've been fairly consistent. I've, I've got enough to keep things going and I've still probably got two or three days worth of listings in stock waiting to go on. So that's kind of where I want to be. And the total sales for yesterday, although I haven't had any sales in the last, for that almost 24 hour period, I did have a couple of half decent sales early doors yesterday, which you would have seen in yesterday's video. So my total sales for yesterday was £44. The universe conspires. I should never have said I will probably have a £40 a day because something out there heard me and gave me exactly what I asked for. So really disappointing. I, I do expect things to go up and down. It's, it's the nature of the beast. Any kind of retail, you'll have strong sales days, you'll have slow sales days. But going from, you know, consistently 150, 170 pounds, etc., dipping all the way down to 40 quid, it's just a bit, a bit disappointing. So it means to hit my 200 pounds per day target sales, which is very much a stretch target and kind of out with my control. All I can do is list stuff and see if people want to buy it. Um, I'm now more than a day behind after only three days. Now, I did not expect to achieve that £200. You know, realistically, that's where I would like to get to. So it gives me something to measure against. Um, so 170 179 for a couple of days. That's, that's good. I was quite pleased with that. But that crash 
and that's 160 quid, 156 pounds shy of my sales target, which is, it's, it's, it's horrific. Anyway, we shall persevere, persist, and all of these other things. Um, I've got my, well, my packaging ain't going to take long today, is it? That'll be done in no time. Um, unfortunately, it means taking time out to jump into the post office or Royal Mail with one parcel. So at the moment, it's just about to turn 10 o'clock. So there's another hour before my cutoff. I'll maybe just wait and do the post much, much later in the day so that if any more orders come in, I can make it worth my while popping in. I say I'm always out and about in that direction anyway. But when you've got 10 parcels to drop off and it takes you a couple of minutes, that seems good. But guaranteed with this one, I'll go in and there will be a queue like an execution and it'll take me 15, 20 minutes to get that one parcel uh, posted, which would be really, really annoying. Anyway, I'm just having a wee whinge there. So, yep, the tracking was going well, helping me keep things in perspective, knowing what is going on. And it's something I will continue with. Um, I need to, I'm gonna get more than 400 pounds listed today to make up for not doing quite as much over the weekend. So if I can get to the 500, that would be great. I've picked up quite a few bits and bobs to go into bundles. Not crazy value bundles, but everything that's kind of 10, 20 pounds. So not too many of them to get up to that 400 pound odd in cost. And uh, a wee follow up as well. Charity shops, counterfeits, fakes. So the I, I showed you all this trainer that I'd picked up. So the purpose of that video was not to complain that I'd bought something that turned out to be a fake. I kind of knew it was when I bought it, but I thought, Ugh, let's just take a chance. Um, there's only so much I can research in the shop. It looked good, and it just turns out that that bit at the back there is the giveaway. So it wasn't a complaint about that. I just happened to have that sitting handy to show as an example of what I'm talking about. The point of it was... And I've, I've done a wee bit of looking up and research on exactly what the legalities around selling fakes and counterfeits are. If, as a business, I was selling those fake shoes, whether I knew it or not, and I get reported, then the maximum penalty is up to 10 years in jail and an unlimited fine. Now, I know that's going to be for people who are mass producing, you know, thousands of pair of, sort of fake Air Jordans and such like. Um, but the penalties are quite severe. If you suspect that somebody is, any business, or any individual is selling fake or counterfeit goods, you're supposed to report them to Action Fraud. Uh, there's a few other ways you can go to report them through the website or whatever. Um, and trading standards will shut them down. So, Again, it goes back to why do charity shops seem to get a buy in all of that? Any other high street store, and I'm, I'm not picking on like wee local charity shops here. There'll be wee local thrift stores, people hand stuff in, they stick it out in the shelves to see if it sells, and they're none the wiser, maybe not even consider if it's a counterfeit or a fake, and you know, they're selling it for a pound fifty or two pounds, whatever it is. But it's these big chains where Yes, they're charities, so everything they sell, their money is going towards a good cause. But they've all got chief executives and other executives and paid managers and the rest who are earning a living from the sales of these goods. So yes, profits will go towards the charitable cause, but there's a lot of expenses before those profits go out there. And that includes paying a lot of wages, a lot of high wages to an awful lot of people. So they are gaining those wages by selling counterfeit goods. That's kind of my issue with that whole thing. So why is there no accountability on that? It would be great as a reseller, as just a buyer, a customer, that if you went into any shop, regardless of whether it's a charity shop or not, and that you bought an item, that it was genuine. That's That seems fair. You shouldn't have to go into these shops and wonder whether or not you're paying money for something that's real and you see it on any reseller video on YouTube 
there will be fakes, they'll be finding fake bags, fake shirts, fake shoes, whatever it is, and it's happening all the time. So why do charity shops get a buy? If anybody's involved in that side of the world, it would be great to know, you know exactly how that works. Um, having said all of that, I do know that one of the shops I go to, which is part of a big chain, has started being very, very picky about uh, copy DVDs and CDs. So the media's not as much of a, an issue anymore because everybody streams stuff anyway, but they now straight away bin anything that they think might be a copy, which they should have been doing probably all along, but they've now got that down in their mandate that if it looks like a copy, it gets binned. But I don't think they're doing the same thing with clothing and you know other fashion fashion accessories and such like. So I wasn't having a moan about that because, oh, I've bought some trainers and they're fakes. I know fine well, I could have just taken them straight back to the shop and got my money back and it wouldn't have been an issue. It's just that why do certain businesses get away with doing certain things that others wouldn't? If you know any of you guys out there that are reselling, if you were going down to the local market and selling hooky trainers, then trading standards would get you. You would get a fine, doubt you'd go to the jail for it, but you would get fined and potentially your business would be shut down. So why? Why that difference? Anyway, enough of all of that. I'm just talking for the sake of talking today, I'm not because I've got no sales to show you. Uh, there was something else I wanted to mention today, and for the life of me, I cannot remember what it was. Um, no sale this week. That's despite not doing anything yesterday sales wise, uh, I've got no space to organise the sale just now because I'm trying to keep all my listings ready to go to keep up with that number. So. I've got all my spare space taken up, keeping that bit organised, but I will be looking at getting another wee sale going at some point in the next one to two weeks. I don't want to do it on YouTube though. I want to do something that's a wee bit more interactive, so I am going to look at how potentially we can do it on Zoom or something similar. So I'll be having a look into that and details will follow once I can work it out and decide the best way forward with doing that. Anyway, that really is all I have to talk about today. Let's see, I've got some bread and butter listings to go up. I've got lots of bundles that I've made up. Some really exciting ones, like four Peppa Pig DVDs. So, actually might be three, because I've just realised that's completely burst. I'll need to find another case for it. Um, that's, I've got some more Mills and Boons. I've, since having picking up those first few. Every time I see them, I've picked them up now. So I've now got another one, two, three, four, five, six bundles of them to go up. I listed a couple singles yesterday. Um, I haven't sold any yet, so I don't know why I've bought more of them, but hopefully they'll start moving soon. We've got a nice Connor Golden War of the Roses trilogy in hardcover. So the three books from that, get that up and going. I've had that as a bundle before and it sold quite well. I've added a couple of books to my Judy Bloom bundle, although I haven't listed them yet. Some vintage, 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 vintage Dick Francis, and a wee stack of George Gently paperbacks. I'm going to get them up as well. So, some different things, and we'll just see how they go. But nothing crazy exciting to share with you all, unless you're super into George Gently, and you can't wait for that listing to pop up and go. So, that's us for today. I drank my coffee before I got started, but, you know, I'm going to go make another one now anyway. At least that int didn't interrupt us as we go along. So, make another coffee, pack up those two books, refund the postage on those, list four or £500 worth of stock, and hope that today's a £300 day and not another £44-pounder. I'll catch you on the flip side. See ya. Love ya. Bye.